Okay, so. Um, just a little quick discussion of what, well, I'll tell you what's going on here quickly. Um, so, you know, I either try, I'm going to try to like live stream every other day or release a little video and these videos will consist mostly just like stuff that I want to talk about or, um, you know, whatever, um, that probably won't be long enough for a live stream. Um, and today going to be talking about, um, what makes a good company? Now I'm mostly going to be using video game companies as examples here, but you can apply this to any company making any product in any, you know, business or anything. Um, and at least in my opinion or my point of view or whatever, um, what, um, well, yeah, well, this is in my opinion, but um, regardless out of all companies, no matter who they are, Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, EA, um, all the guys who made Cyberpunk, um, I forgot their names, but the guys who made Cyberpunk, Ubisoft, uh, Disney, Warner Brothers, DC, Marvel, Pixar, so on, so, so on and so forth. All of the, every company that exists, Amazon, you know, even like shops like Asda, Tesco's, eBay, you know, all of them, they're, all they really care, all the company cares about is making money. Like, um, which is also why, like, when I see, when pe when I see, like, companies just, like, um, going, like, um, hashtag Black History Month for um, BLM or whatever, it just feels really pandemic like, and, I'm, and it's not just because I, you know, and it's not because I don't like those things, if they did, like, hashtag, um, centri centrism is the best, and, uh, or whatever, then I'd still be maybe because it's like you're just pandering. You you don't really care about the subjects you're talking about. You just think that uh, these are the subjects that people care the most most about. So you think by supporting these things, then it's going to get more people to buy your product or whatever you sell, like shop at your store or whatever instead of uh, using your um competitors um and it, uh, to me that's just no i don't like it it's just bad um like if they thought it would be more profitable to be racist that then they would like even like if you go back to like when racism was a um, was societally accept acceptable, shops were racist, like shop owners, you know, the companies back then were racist, like, um, they probably weren't, like, there was probably at diff varying from the, like, different points, like, um, when most black people were slaves, they probably weren't even saved black people or let black people in the shops, um, but when black people were no longer slaves, they probably... Uh, you know, let them in the shops or whatever, you know, at the same point it would have been varied, but, you know, shops have done this for a long time, you know, companies have done this for a long time. They just parrot whatever the talking points of the time are. And, that, uh, you know, it just feels, I just don't like it. So, no company cares about the individual. There may be individuals in that company that care about um, subjects like that, but the company itself just cares about making money. And, that, and again, that is true for literally every company on earth. There is no company on earth that care that would uh, honestly take profit hits to... Uh, um, you know, appears, you know, people, unless they legitimately thought 
that they, in the long run it was going to make them more money than the initial hit. So like um, when Net, I can't remember the name, but there was that comedian guy and then like a series of his got put on Netflix, but he wasn't getting paid for it, so Netflix pulled it down. Now, if Netflix wouldn't, if Netflix wouldn't have made any profit from that, I doubt they would have done it. Because again, they're a company, their goal is to make money. But they have a pre-existing relationship with that uh, comedian, and it, uh, um, in the past they, he hasn't made them money. So, by uh, not removing them, that would have created a negative, uh, you know, he, you know, he would have been pissed at that. So, um, by removing it, he now has a more positive relationship with Netflix, meaning that he could then go on to make Netflix even more money than what that series had done. And not only that, but um, some people may have uh, cancelled their Netflix subscriptions because it was on there. So, then they would have also taken an initial hit as well. So, in the long run, it was more profitable for Netflix to do that. So, it's that kind of stuff you hear. Stuff. Um, and, it, uh, uh, but, now that we've established that all companies care about is making money. And that everything they do is, has the explicit end goal of making more money. Now... We now you may be asking. So, if all companies at the core are the same, how can you really say what are the good ones and what are the bad ones? Um, but I would say that's fairly simple. And that, uh, how I would, how in my opinion, I would uh, uh, judge whether a company is good or bad is by the means of how they make money. So, um, take Bethesda Game Studios, for example. Um, to make money, they've lied and scammed their um, consumers, their, their customers. They lied and scammed them on the multiplications, like with the nylon bag situation with pre-ordering Fallout 76. Um, and uh, it's and it's stuff like that, you know, purposely screwing over um, your co your customers or um, even like people who aren't your customers, like the environment. Um, you know, just having a negative impact on people, you know, just, and things, you know, just screwing over um, people, you know, even like their own employees, just to like make an extra book. Um, you would you could say, um, and that, that I think that is how we should judge all companies, not just video games. You know, shopping companies, um, you know, movie companies. You know, any, any sort of company we should judge how, um, you know, not by oh well those do put hashtag Black Lives Matters in their post or. Hashtag, uh, what's relevant now, um, uh, hashtag Joe Biden's now president in the, ta in the tweet, so they must, so they're a good company. No. You judge by how they act all the time, not just on certain occasions. So, um, Amazon, uh, I wouldn't say Amazon is a bad company in general, just like, I know they do, like, really push their um, employees to, you know, deliver the packages as fast as possible, and uh, um, when that came out, I wasn't really surprised, because, yeah, like, uh, there's so many items on Amazon that are next day delivery, that y it really wasn't a shock that, you know, that they really did that, and anybody who's just like, oh my god, I had no idea Amazon was treating their employees this way. I thought they just magicked the parcel to my front door. You know, they are, they're clearly just like, playing up their reactions for the camera, and 
again, this doesn't make what Amazon doing is good, but it doesn't make Amazon itself a bad company because um, because they, um, again, while everything they do still has the end goal of making money, just like any other company, they do provide a service that people use and genuinely need, especially in this day and age when there's a pandemic and you need to, and that uh, you need something, but it's, you know, not uh, uh, the best idea to go outside to a shop to get it. So you order it off Amazon and it uh, um, gets there quickly, uh, and which makes it good for ordering emergency, you know, well not emergency, but you know, like, um, you didn't realise you was low on X thing that you need, so you can just order it off Amazon and get it next day, um, so it really does, you know, it, it, it you just gotta balance the good with the bad. Amazon probably improves more lives than it um, negatively impacts. Um, and it, uh, while I do, you know, honestly have sympathy for the people who work at Amazon that have to work insane hours um, or they get fired in, you know, like, um, I can't remember the entire story, but I know they will be working insane hours. Um, I do feel, I do honestly have sympathy for them because nobody should be made to work that amount of time. And honestly, Amazon instead of doing that, Amazon should cut their hours and then hire, um, you know, just more employees to, you know, to take o you know, to take up that uh, time. So. Um, you know, their employees aren't as overworked, um, or something like that, I don't know, I'm not a businessman, but you know, um, and, it, uh, something I want to talk about quickly, it, uh, are two companies I want to talk about, because, uh, what I'm going to be talking about here, um, these two companies are very similar in what they do, that is Nintendo and Disney. Nintendo and Disney are similar in a couple of ways. They have, uh, the first way is they've spent years carefully cultivating the idea that, or you know, their reputation of being a family friend, of being family friendly and, uh, um, you know, not uh, being, you know, being family friendly and being that those companies you can, tr you know, trust to just leave your kids with to, you know, entertain them and everything. Uh, that's the first way, and uh, uh, I think both companies have done that. It's not like neither have had um, more non-child friendly titles. Like Nintendo's have has had. Metroid, which isn't, you know, exactly GTA, but it's, you know, shooting and sci-fi, um, and I wanted to call it Nintendo's most kid-friendly franchise, um, well, anyway, um, and the Nintendo's had, uh, um, well, Nintendo's promoted um, some non-kid friendly stuff that they've promoted. I think they, I don't think they've promote, promoted FNAF, mind you, that's mostly played by kids. Um, but yeah, what, where have they? Um, well, uh, that, um, happy game thing, like, apparently that's, that's kind of like a mental art. They, they, I'm, I can't think of any, but I've known they, they promoted less kid friendly stuff and you know they've and more recently with the switch they've gone out of their way to get let more um con more video games that are more orientated towards an older audience um and that uh, uh, disney has um has uh some stuff like um the um Marvel stuff has, uh, while most of it is, uh, very, you know, kid, well, all of it is kid-friendly, but a lot of it can get a bit dark, um, 
and like with like when four um you know ha lost half half of um the you know Asgard was destroyed and half of all the Asgardians was killed which I think was a um kind of retcon because when I watched Infinity War they really made it out to me like all of the Asgardians were dead except for four because Thanos just blew up their ship and I don't think they had a spaceship just lying around and I don't think Thanos would have just given them a spaceship and uh, four just didn't even like mention he, he killed my you know Thanos killed my best friend my brother and half of my people Mind you, they really, I think they really should have put in there just like clarifying whether Thanos killed all of them or half of them because it, at least to, in my opinion, it really makes it seem like he killed all of them. Especially seeing as how nobody went back for four. And also, if if he only killed half of them, why did the other half still go to Earth? Because it's like no, none of them have any connections to Earth because Asgardians don't really go to Earth. So just like. Why did they still go to Earth? Why didn't they just? Why did they? Why didn't they go somewhere? It's just a bit confusing. Um, and again, I honestly think that in Infinity War they intended that for all the Asgardians to be dead. Um, but anyway, so you know, in Infinity War, you know, half of his people were killed. You know, and the, the, he went into like a bit of a um, destructive spi self-destructive spiral, and that. Um, and then uh, when he fails to kill um, Thanos, and he uh, kill, and then he wipes half of life off, you know, out of reality, then um, he goes into an even bigger self-destructive, depressed spiral. You know, getting fat and you know just being genuinely depressed, which I which I actually quite like because it is realistic. Like if you, you know. If all of that shit happened to you in in on the same day, uh, pretty much, then you would probably go into a depressed spiral. Um, I've completely forgotten where my where my rant where I was talking about. Um, yeah. Anyway, Disney has some like more depressing stuff as well, and uh, you know they they both of them are kid friendly with a bit of an edge, basically. Um, and it, uh, um, both of them also are very protective of their IPs because um, they've spent so much time and money carefully cultivating their reputation as a kid-friendly company that they are fiercely protective of their IPs. And it, but does this make, like, they've done some, which I will admit, dick moves. Like, I don't know too much about Disney, but I'm pretty sure if you look it up, Disney's probably DMCA'd a few, like, fan projects. And, um, and it, uh, uh, Disney is supposed to be in the public domain, but, uh, not Disney, um, Mickey Mouse is supposed to be in the public domain. Uh, he's that old, but Disney has uh, whenever like his Di Mickey Mouse's um, you know status for like whether it should be in the public domain or not has come up. Sh you know, strangely, Disney you know Disney makes just makes um, investments to make sure. Um, Mickey Mouse stays within, you know, their copyright and not, and does not go into the public domain. Um, which, again, capitalism just poisoning um, democracy. And I'm not anti, I'm not an anti-capitalist. I'm not. I, I do think that capitalism is currently the best um, system that we have like there's probably a bear system that nobody has come up with yet but right now capitalism is the best system we have but it does tend to poison democracy a bit because of human greed anyway um 
you know, they do shit like that. Um, and more recently, Nintendo shut down a um, Smash Bros. Melee competition, which um, they're fully within their rights to do because they, they were use they were using um, illegal means there uh, to do do the tournament um, that violated their um, TOS. Um, so yeah. And there's kind of the argument of um, copyright is kind of a if you don't use it you lose it. So um, if they don't, if it, you know, say um, did uh, going back to Disney, say Disney didn't um, strike a fan an unauthorized fan uh, movie or you using Mickey Mouse. And then somebody else does the same thing, but then they try to strike the second one down. In court, they could use the example of the first one uh, to justify, um, you know, Disney not protecting the IP anymore. Therefore, it should be within the public domain or whatever, uh, and they should lose the IP. Um, that can happen, and that can happen also happen with like video game franchises. And so on. So, um, you have to defend your IP, and you know if you want to keep it. Um, and companies who don't defend their IPs sometimes can lose them in the court of law. Um, and it, uh, um, Nintendo obviously and it is very protective. Like they've struck down fan games. And the, the, they and stuff like that. Now, are they? Is that now? Here's a really big question: Is that a you know? Are they bad? Like, obviously, it's a bad thing because um, you know, the, you know, fan games that people have put a lot of time into and they have a lot of creativity and imagination are just gone. But again, you have to ask the question. Does this make Nintendo bad? Because, um, you know, a bad action doesn't inherently make the person who does it bad. Because, um, you know, they may have reasoning to do that bad thing. So say, I killed somebody. That would be seen as a bad thing. But, um... What if I killed that person to save a, no, an innocent person because they were going to kill an innocent person and there's no other way to stop them? So yeah, so it's just like layers. It's like yes, they basically killed these projects, but you know they killed them because uh, of copyright law and you know the whole if you don't use it, you can lose it in the court of law. So. Um, it, you know, if they didn't do this, and they might have lost the Pokemon IP, which meant would could then mean that uh, loads of, like um, half baked uh, Pokemon clones could come out and uh, be mass like massive scans. So it's like a uh, scam. So like uh, on the mobiles, they could legitimately like, just make a, a game using the official Pokemon characters and Pokemon. And it, um, then it would just be like one massive like scam basically or something and then you know the IP is basically women because you just have half baked and half assed scam knockoff Pokemon games coming out. Well not even knockoff Pokemon games but um, you know you know so it's just kind of you have to look at the ramifications of both actions. The ramifications of them pulling them down is that now the will, you know, that project is dead and a lot of creativity and time has gone to waste. And the ramifications of them not doing it could be them losing the IP and then that IP being used and abused by every, um, every you know, scammer out there and everyone who uh, doesn't really care about Pokemon, but knows I can make them a lot of money to make a po half-assed Pokemon game. Um, 
So, it's just kind of like, that's more of a morally grey area. Um, and the, the, um, but let's, but let's look at Nintendo as a whole. Um, so from reports from multiple employee, employees, according to them, they don't crunch. Nintendo doesn't crunch. Like, uh, I've heard of, like, um, developers on the Nintendo crunching, like, I think, uh, so, like, Nintendo own, so, you know, like, there's, there's Nintendo, but then Nintendo is, like, Platinum Games, and, like, Platinum Games, uh, as itself, um, acts as a totally separate entity. Um, but they are still own, I don't think they actually own Platinum Games, but it's just an example. I can't remember, I can't, uh, think of any, well, Game Freak, actually. Uh, you know, Nintendo partly owns Game Freak, uh, but for the most part, Game Freak, um, is a totally separate entity from Nintendo. And Nintendo only ha doesn't even have, um, majority sway over Game Freak. They have, uh, I don't, uh, I think they only have, like, one third say in Game Freak, I think. Uh, I could be wrong on that. Um, so, um, but Game Freak could have crunch, but that wouldn't mean Nintendo has crunch, because um, Game Freak, again, is acts as a separate entity to Nintendo, even though they own a good portion of it. But, you know, uh, employees that, that and, you know, projects that are directly under Nintendo themselves, um, according to several sources, they don't have crunch. They're, a project is given the, the amount of time it is needed. Um, and the, uh, I think the, and I do think like, Game Freak might probably have crunch because there's a lot of planning that goes into Pokemon being released, like more than almost any other game franchise probably because they have like the anime that has to coincide with the video games. They have the merchandise, they have movies. All of this has to coincide with the release of a Pokemon game, so they probably do have uh, crunch to get Pokemon games out. Um, but uh, again, Nintendo games that they di you know, that uh, they directly work on don't have crunch. So it's just like that is really good. So it's just like they. So it's just like ha just like. They can be a bit of a dick to, um, you know, uh, you know, fan games and the stuff like that um, to protect their IP. But again, they have the they have good reasons for doing that, and the, they also, um, you know, don't have crunch. So that's more good than bad. So you could so uh, there's no denying that Nintendo is a good company. Um, company, even if you don't agree with how they go about enforcing their IPs, like, um, in my opinion, um, what they should do with the IPs is, um, you know, like, if someone makes a fan Pokemon game and it's a good fan Pokemon game, they can still strike it down, like, I don't really care, like, that, you know, that's a thing, but what I think they should, should do is hire the people who make these games. Um, on to uh, to make an official one, like um, what Sega did with uh, um, Sonic. Um, so Sonic. Um, what is it called? Sonic. Um, I forgot it. that that two D Sonic game that recently came out. Um, ah, uh, well, not recently, but came out a while back. Sonic. Um, something I can't remember, but. Um, mind you, that, even, even like in my opinion, because they still released a 3D Sonic game while at the same time, it, it felt a bit like um, them just like going, look, this is like a 2D Sonic game, just like you love so much. Look how inferior it is to the latest 3D Sonic game. Like, but uh, that could just be me just assuming the worst of a company. Um, but, um, yeah. Uh, again, just because a video game company is good, doesn't mean that they're beyond criticism. Um, and, but then you have like, 
uh, Sony who are even worse than Nintendo. Like, I don't know about their crunch. Like, I don't know if they have crunch. But, um, uh, Sony just dick over their fans way too much. Like, um, with, um, Cyberpunk, um, the devs basically said that everybody's in the title uh, 2 a refund and that uh, Sony's own um, policies say that uh, everybody who bought Cy Cyberpunk is entitled to a refund and they are still denying refunds to people who own Cyberpunk. So yeah, they are purposefully screwing over their consumers for money, basically, um, and uh, uh, this isn't the first time they've screwed over their customers. Um, like there was a whole thing with um, Plate Station. They basically struck that down for no reason because it's not like they were even making money. It's not like they're even going to make any money out of doing this. But they're just screwing over their fans. It's like, oh. You want custom face paint for your PlayStation 5? Too bad. We're going to strike it down. Yeah. Because fuck you. Even though we aren't selling our own face paint for our own fucking system. We just don't want other people making money. Because we created a market which we are not taking advantage of. And you, our customers get to suffer for it. Like seriously, out of the big three, Nintendo, Sony and Microsoft, Sony is by far the worst. Like they are the most anti-consumer out of the three. Like I'm not going to sit here and pretend that Nintendo is the most pro-consumer. I think that's probably Microsoft of them all, um, honesty. Um, but Sony just by far horrible to their customers um some uh, sometimes um like the worst things nintendo will do is like um strike down uh uploads of music from their games or fan games again i don't think that's good but that's pretty much the worst they're gonna do do um which again isn't all that bad but Sony just purposefully screwing over um, their customers you know, like two times within the past couple of months, and the, you know what? And the, one time for money, and one time they didn't even make get any money out of it. They just did it for shits and giggles. Like Nintendo has a, always has a reason for doing it. They don't just strike down videos and stuff for shits and giggles. They do it because they have a legitimate legal reason and, you know, all that. And, uh, um, while Sony can legally do this, um, it's just like, there's no real reason to do it, like, other than just dicking over your customers. Um, now, if they had released custom faceplates for the PS5 uh, on launch, just like, um, pick up a PS5 and, uh, you, you know, you can pick up a base white PS5 and if you want custom faceplates, you can get, uh, um, custom faceplates in these colours and, or like a Spider-Man Miles Morales one for 10 US dollars. And they probably, and the, the people would probably buy it up in droves. Um, like, if they did that, then I would have no problem with them, um, striking down PlayStation, but... It's just like, um, it's just like, if we're not making custom Facebooks, then you can make custom Facebooks. And it's just like, ultimately dickish. Um, um, but then you, but then, um, talk about Microsoft. They, be, they may be the most consumer friendly out of the big three, but I will never forgive them for what they did to Rareware. The the rareware, they killed old rareware. I know rareware is still making games. I think the most recent one was Sea of Thieves, but 
what they I will never forgive them for what they did to Rare. Actually, no, the most recent one would be Perfect Dark Remake, technically, because that's just been that. Anyway, um, so you know, Rare, Rare wasn't doing too well, and then they got boiled by Microsoft, and I really wish it got boiled by Nintendo because boy, fuck. Um, and then uh, they made very bad decisions. They made Rare, Rare make. Um, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, and I honestly do think they heavily pushed them to make uh, a ban Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts and not Banjo 3 because I, ca I can't confirm this, but it just really feels like it was. Log really does feel like a stand in for Microsoft. Because, think about it, uh, my Log comes in and basically. Um, takes away the classic like collectathon element and platform elf elements of the past games, and it makes them drive cars. Like it's just a little the similarity, the and the you know obviously like that could be like an analogy for Microsoft coming to Rareware and just like we don't want another we don't want Banjo Three. Nah, people don't want it. There's even like a line like Log says, I like, people like kids in nowadays just want to shoot stuff. That honestly does feel like something Microsoft would say. So it honestly just feels like my, Microsoft came in and was like, no, make a Banjo Kazooie racing game with cars and planes and all that. And um, and then after that, inevitably really failed because even though it is a good game. They they had previously teased in the past Banjo 3E on multiple occasions, like at the end of Banjo 2E, and I think there was and there was even a tr full on trailer just like teasing Banjo 3E, and it's just like my God, like they even like canned Conquer's Bad Fair Day 2, which they had previously teased. Like, yeah, no, this reeks of. Microsoft meddling and then once they fucked all that up they just made Rareware make shitty Kinect games and if you don't know my um, history with Rareware while I never beat Banjo-Kazooie as a child it was my favourite Nintendo 64 game, and I must have played Mumbo's Mountain more times than I've had uh, dinners. Um, and it's just like, my god, oh, they've still made so many good games. I never, I didn't play Banjo Tooie until until Rare Replay, which is the only good thing Microsoft did with Rare, Rare is make Rare Replay, and uh, um. It's just like they they did they made so many good games on the Nintendo 64 and they had so much potential and Microsoft killed it. Like if you don't think Microsoft killed Rareware and with meddling and all that, then why would uh, some of the uh, rare rare employees who were some of the big names like Grant Kirkhove who worked on Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie and Conquer's Bad Fair Day, I believe they you know de developers who worked on those games back on from the Nintendo 64 era left Rareware. Like why would they leave Rareware if Nin if Microsoft weren't specifically stating no you can't do what you want. You have to make connect games. Um, and it, yeah, now I, I do know that um, apparently Microsoft have, have come out to, uh, like when they were asked um, why haven't they made like sequels or remakes or any of the older games, they said, uh, "Well, we just basically let them do what they want to do," and I just like no. Your company, you do, you spent thousands on rareware, 
When a company buys out another company, they don't just let that company do whatever they want to do. They specifically, um, you know, tell them what to do. They they just like, okay, we bought you now. We want you to make this these things because this is why we bought you. Like, um, well, apparently, actually, apparently, um, Microsoft bought Rare Rare because they thought they had Donkey Kong. Whether or not that's true, I, I'm going to believe it's true just because it's hilarious. But, um, let's say, you know, like, in this case, like, Microsoft will do like, okay, we bought you because you have Banjo-Kazooie. We want you to make a new Banjo-Kazooie game. Um, and they've at least supported the Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie to 360 and then uh, put that into Rearware. So, Microsoft obviously wants, uh, want, you know, wanted that, but... I honestly heavily doubt that Microsoft has zero influence over what Rareware does. Heck, I'd probably argue that they have total influence. Like, they probably have the final say on what they do and don't do as Rareware. Um, and it, uh, that's probably why, I don't know, I can't confirm this, but it's probably why people, you know, some of the Developers like and you know like Grand Kicker went and made Platonic games because they couldn't make the game as they wanted. They probably I don't know they might have had a non-disclosure agreement uh, when they left, basically saying that they can't um, that they can you know when that they get X amount of money on it, but they can't talk negatively about Rare or maybe they just don't want to talk about it or. Whatever, but it honestly just it honestly just like makes me think if Microsoft had no influence over Rareware and what they did, then why did they leave? If they were just making whatever games they wanted. And just do you really think Rareware? Rare fucking Rare, the creators of Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, and Conker's fucking bad fair day would Settle for creating a shitty Connect games. I don't think so. Um, so I will never forgive Microsoft for fucking over Rare. Um, and you do also have that kind of thing that's like, how do they treat the you know companies they buy and all that and. I don't think them screwing over Rareware makes Microsoft a bad company, but it definitely lowers that. It def it definitely is just like a ball and chain for my opinion of them because for na forever my opinion will be low for on Microsoft for what they did to Rareware. The only thing that could make their make me like them a bit more. Is if they ported or even HD HD remastered or ported um, Rare Replay to Nintendo Switch, or even just Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, or just put Ban the Banjo Trilogy on there, um, and they're just all in one package, Banjo Trilogy, like, and you get Kazooie, Tooie, and Nuts and Bolts, and it's like. Again, I like Nuts and Bolts, but that would just be so good. And, uh, you know, that that would honestly make me feel, you know, be like, okay, they may have dicked over Rareware, but at least they're actually now doing something with their IPs that I love. Um, so, yeah, anyway, this is good. I've, this is almost an hour long now, and uh, I didn't think I'd be talking this long about it, but on this subject so maybe this would have been better in a, a like live stream discussion um but i don't know anyway um i'm gonna end it off here um tell me what companies do you think are good and bad and why and you know just comment down anything talking about anything that i've mentioned in this video here today and i'll see you guys in the next video Bye bye